Good afternoon, everybody. It's a great pleasure and an honor to be hosting as a moderator this webinar that is um, uh, the, the comments of uh, the Hellenic Society of Medical Oncology partnership with uh, Cancer Expert Now with SEN. Um, we are uh, glad that we have on board our president, uh, uh, Dr. Ioannis Bukovinas, and also the SEN um, creator and uh, a world renowned oncologist, a leader in melanoma and other fields, Charles Bolsch, that is going to discuss a little bit why all these um, uh, comments that a few years ago in the US. Uh, Sen, as you probably know from all the material that has been sent to you in your emails, is an educational uh, organization which is um, uh, created in order to help uh, oncologists from all over the world to connect, uh, exchange knowledge and answer particular uh, cases and uh, uh, questions that um, is difficult to address and uh, the hugely important thing is that this is something that's been done by experts from all around the world. So the agenda today after the salutations of our two presidents, um, uh, Dr. Dimitra Kanalupetis, uh, a Greek that has uh, lived and worked in the US for a long time and is a SEN expert. Um, also for a couple of uh, years now, we'll discuss how we can all use this um, uh, SEND platform, how, how can we apply, how can we upload a question and what to expect. So Yanis, I give the floor to you. Thank you, Zenia. Uh, thank you, Zenia. Uh, on behalf from, of the Board of Directors of HESMO, it's my pleasure to extend a cordial welcome uh, to all of you. Your presence here, even virtually, uh, make us very, very happy. And um, just to make a short notice how this has uh, started, it, go, it goes back six months ago uh, during the advanced course of surgical and medical management of melanoma held in Athens and organized by European Society of Surgical Oncology under the presidency of this meeting of uh, uh, Rector uh, Odyssea Zoras. Uh, we had the opportunity to meet uh, Charles Balz, the co-founder of uh, this educational platform, uh, Cancer Expert Now. And uh, everybody I'm sure knows uh, Charles, uh, past CEO of FASCO and um, uh, president of Society Surgical Oncology and head of the Division of Surgical uh, Oncology in MD Anderson. And we discussed the possibility of creating a partnership between uh, SEN and HESMO. And now, uh, after the approval of the Board of Directors, lawyers, GDPR persons, here we are. Uh, through this operation, uh, the, this cooperation, our members will have the opportunity to have an unlimited access uh, to see a uh, multidisciplinary panel of uh, experts. And uh, this panel of brilliant, uh, really brilliant cancer experts uh, who are focused on specific treatment type or a specific uh, cancer, uh, cancer treatment will provide the most accurate and updated information specific to your exact diagnosis. That means that you will have besides you, especially for rare forms of cancer or different to, different to handle, uh, the most renowned uh, all over the world, uh, key opinion leaders uh, advise you uh, for the best and the profit of your patients. And all of this would be uh, without any payment, free of charge, and not only this, but our, uh, this platform will, uh, will expand uh, uh, our medical knowledge, uh, especially in this landscape um, uh, which is very uh, growing, uh, which is growing very rapidly, and identify 
potential clinical trials for your patients and to also review uh, and um, uh, the, all the new and evolving treatments. So it's my pleasure that uh, under this board of directors um, um, uh, leadership, we created this partnership with SEN and uh, I really am proud of that. Without any other uh, words, uh, I pass the floor to Xenia and I hope in the near future we'll expand uh, our cooperation also with common webinars or congresses on uh, change of residences. Thank you very much, uh, Charles, for your kind support and your kind uh, willingness uh, to give us um, uh, your way of thinking. Thank you very much. On behalf of uh, Sanjeev Agarwala, our co-founder and chief medical officer, Jeff Meehan, our CEO, and myself as the president of Cancer Expert Now International, it's a pleasure to have this inaugural session with HESMO to launch a joint educational partnership. Cancer Expert Now is a global education company we are fortunate that we have support from pharmaceutical companies for CME grants so that we can provide educational material and programs at no cost to the users around the world. Our distinguishing features is everything is done on smartphones and computers, so we focus on distance learning. And our content is to uh, provide expert opinion on smartphones in a very efficient and uh, complete way with experts responding to complicated circumstances or real world applications of innovative therapies as we begun. So just for example, the last one I did was in breast cancer and we had a patient with bilateral breast cancer with different molecular markers on each side and was also BRCA2. So there's a large number of combinations that might be applied and the question from our experts is, what would you do in this complicated circumstance? So it's just an example of the kinds of things that we all face in our real world practice that may not exactly fit indications for innovative therapies or molecular diagnostics that are coming into our practice so rapidly. So we're delighted to do this. We hope that all of you in HESBO as a membership benefit will participate in our program and give us feedback in our surveys of how this positively impacts on your practice. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Charles. Uh, we are really glad that you are with us in this journey that will start with uh, the introduction. Um, Dimitra Kanalupitis, a SEN expert uh, panelist for some time now, a Greek, so uh, we could probably mix a little bit the languages, but Charles, you know Greek. Uh, you, are, you are half Greek, half Italian, half American, no? <laughs> Yes, I have to mention that I have an honorary PhD from the University of Crete, so I am exactly. partly Greek. Yeah, so you will be able to follow even if we mix a little bit the languages with Greek. Uh, Dimitra uh, will uh, introduce us to this platform uh, for the next uh, 20 minutes approximately and we will have a live demonstration of everything, how to get started, how to upload a question, what to expect as an answer. Uh, thank you very much, Dimitra. Please, please start. Introduction. Oh, um, sorry, someone muted. Um, thank you, Zenia, for the introduction. Um, we are all overjoyed that the CN is uh, launching in Greece. Um, I know Zenia said it already, but I plan to interchange between Greek and English as I see appropriate because that will help facilitate the process and, you know, I can emphasize some points that way, but technically the official language is English, but we'll do it both ways. 
Um, και θέλω πάρα πολύ να απευθύνω ένα ζεστό χαιρετισμό στους συναδέλφου μου στην Ελλάδα, γιατί κάθε φορά που μιλάω ελληνικά ανοίγει η καρδιά μου και επειδή χαίρομαι πάρα πολύ που είμαι στην πατρίδα επιτέλου κοντά σα. Οπότε θα ξεκινήσουμε λοιπόν και θα τα πούμε. Ένα λόγο που ξεκίνησαν όλα αυτά είναι λίγο τα επόμενα slide και θα γυρίσω τώρα στα αγγλικά. So we know that um, Kian's innovation has been, you know, has been accelerated uh, in a, at a rapid pace and that resulted in great improved five-year overall patient survivals in all cancers. However, when you have such rapid acceleration you know, in cancer innovation, then you have all this emerging data and evidence that is very critical in optimizing your you know, everyday practice. So, um, Oncologists uh, are actually, I'm sorry, yeah. oncologists are actually called um, to know this updated information day by day. Um, and if you look at the numbers, we have new treatments in over 24 different cancer types, over 78 indication approvals for 63 new drugs since 2013. So, you know, making sure you incorporated the most updated information in cancer care in day to day is actually pretty complex. If you look at here, you can see that um, the pipeline of new medicine in late phase development exceeds over 700 mole molecules in over a decade and as you can see the the curve here has no intention of even leveling off or downtrend so this is a very hard task and i think this is what kind of um brought on the idea of a widespread network of world-renowned oncology experts who cover all major cancer types and hematologic disorders. So even though today we're going to be talking mostly about the text-based communication system and how that works, and we're gonna show how we navigate through the system, I think it's important to understand that CEN is not just that. You know, it offers multidisciplinary two more boards, uh, clinical trial referrals and academic lectures. And I know Yanis Bukovina has already mentioned that, you know, we will be having some webinars in the future. So it's very important to understand that. But the idea for today's webinar is really to show you how to navigate through the text-based communication platform. Now, CN has partnered with oncologic societies and practices in Latin America, Middle East, Asia, and Europe. And you can see across the world map the distribution of these partnerships, over 30,000 oncologists across the world, and we're hoping to expand this uh, further. So in essence, what we are going through today is a no-cost text-based distant learning education program. Θέλω να το σκεφτείτε αυτό σαν ένα εκπαιδευτικό πρόγραμμα μάθησης εξ αποστάσεως, όπως είναι όλες αυτές οι δραστηριότητες που κάνουμε για, τα, για τη συνεχιζόμενη ιατρική εκπαίδευση. Πρακτικά σκεφτείτε ότι όταν υποβάλλουμε μια ερώτηση και όταν παίρνουμε μια απάντηση και γίνεται μια ανταλλαγή μεταξύ δύο ογκολόγων, ας πούμε του ειδικού και του ογκολόγου που βάλει το ερώτημα, αυτό θεωρείται ως μια δραστηριότητα, σύμμη δραστηριότητα. Και σίγουρα παίρνει ε, αυτός που συμμετέχει το, ας πούμε, το μόριο για, το, για αυτή τη δραστηριότητα, αλλά για μένα το όφελος δεν είναι το θα πάρεις ένα πόντο, είναι ότι έχεις αυτή την ανταλλαγή απόψεων και μαθαίνει τι σου λέει κάποιος ειδικό. Και θα πούμε και περισσότερο για αυτό στο μέλλον. So in essence, what you do, you know, the idea is you submit a question in a patient case and there is an algorithm that automatically uh, identifies the best expert to respond. Um, if anybody is concerned about privacy or security, the, the system is completely private, secure and personalized. Οπότε αν κάποιος έχει έννοια μήπως δεν θέλει να εκτεθεί, αν κάνει μια ερώτηση, δεν είναι η ερώτηση στο κοινό. Η ερώτηση πάει σε κάποιους ειδικού, οι οποίοι απαντούν πίσω και αυτό είναι ένα κλειστό κύκλωμα μεταξύ του αυτού που υποβάλλει την ερώτηση και αυτών που απαντούν. Um, the system has the capacity of translating over 50 common languages, um, including Greek, obviously, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the translation down the line. Now, I want to stand here a little bit and talk about the experts. I know both uh, Charles and Yanis already spoke about it, but we have over 250 experts uh, in the top of their fields, you know, answering questions. You can, this is the American slide, so I apologize, I don't have the European slide. Um, but we have um, many European experts from Belgium, Germany, Italy, uh, Finland, Poland. These are some of the sites, you know, from um, the American experts. And you can see here, University of Chicago, my, my hometown, Dana Farber, John Hopkins, you know, um, all these great places. 
But the idea here is also that CN wants to recruit uh, local regional experts from Greece. And the CN leadership is actually um, preparing a list of experts because it's imperative that we incorporate the Greek expertise into the therapeutic plans that actually are tailored to the Greek oncologic reality. So very, very important. Now, what's unique about this program is that it, it regards everybody. So it's not just for people who are just out of training, new in practice or members in training, but it's aimed to be as an expert to expert interaction, okay? So it's very important to emphasize this um, because the idea of learning and globalizing medicine and instituting a standard of care across the boards is what guides all our international conferences. So the same idea runs this program as well. The difference is that instead of having to travel thousands and thousands of miles to go to international conferences and meet the experts in person over there, the experts are coming to your door, okay? So you will see, you know, William Gradisher, for example, you know, is the co-chair of the NCC and, you know, breast cancer guidelines. We know we met Charles, you know, uh, Sanjeeva Garwala, one of the top melanoma experts, you know, in the world. You know, these are the people answering your questions, okay? So instead of you finding them over in the US or in Europe or all over Greece, you know, you find them here. And that's the most important thing I can tell you about this program. So we're going to start uh, with a few instruction slides about how to register and submit a question. You will see that I've translated all the important information underneath. So I'm going to run through the instruction slides in English. But then when we do the live demonstration, I'm going to switch to Greek. Οπότε ε, είπα ότι έχουμε μεταφράσει εδώ κάποια σημαντικά στοιχεία στα διάφορα slide, ε, σε κάθε slide που θα δείξουν την πλοήγηση του συστήματος. Θα μιλήσω στα αγγλικά για τα επόμενα ε, slide ε, που δείχνουμε με το PowerPoint πώς ε, πλοηγούμαστε στο σύστημα, αλλά όταν κάνουμε την ζωντανή επίδειξη τότε θα ξαναγυρίσουμε στα ελληνικά. So first of all, as with everything, you need to actually uh, register an account, you know, create a username and password, and this will be your unique username and password that allows you to have the privacy security um, that we talked about. So once you create an account by filling in the appropriate information, you're ready to log in. Um, and then uh, you pretty much uh, log in with the email and the password you have already set. Once you log in, this is really your dashboard. You know, everything you need to know as a summary is over here. Uh, you can see if you have any pending discussions, uh, meaning that you maybe ask the question and you have an answer waiting. You have a survey to do, I'll talk about it down the line. Um, this is, everything is here. The feed section, I'm gonna talk on the live demonstration. So let's say you want to ask a question, so you click to ask a question. Um, and then you start the process, which is pretty much self-explanatory, but we're going to go through it anyway. So initially, you need to actually choose the closest diagnosis that fits your case. Usually, that's very straightforward. And then we have two categories, the general question category, which is most of the time, and the COVID-19 category. Now, um, I'm actually pretty excited about this. When I saw that CN jumped on, the, on this immediately after the um, COVID pandemic started, which to me was amazing. So they put up a panel that can ask, you know, I can answer questions that are COVID related. And this, you can imagine, is so important because all these questions all of a sudden arose about treatment, surgery, chemotherapy uh, during the COVID pandemic era. So I was very excited about that. Once you choose what your question is related, then you move along and you select the patient's gender and then age in years. And then this is where you actually um, uh, put in the, your uh, questions as well as the brief summary of a case. So I'm going to spend a little, a little bit of time here just explaining, you know, how important it is, you know, this section is because this is not meant to be like a two page narrative of a case you saw in the office. This is not meant to be an overall consultation on a patient, you know, you're about to see or you saw already. This is meant to ask specific clinical, um, to answer specific clinical questions uh, that usually, you know, either at a point of debate or someone needs more information about it. Um, so in essence, we're asking you to 
put in maybe a paragraph or two, but even though we're saying brief, it needs to be very detailed and very precise. You can use universally accepted acronyms, obviously for breast cancer, ERP, ARHER2, that's totally fine, but otherwise, you know, we need to uh, be very specific about what we're writing. And then you need to list your questions in order in a very clear way. Usually we say a question or two, sometimes we see more than that. Um, as long as they're uh, pretty clear questions, you know, it's not a problem the experts will answer. I like personally if people put in comorbidities there or performance status, um, previous lines of treatments, obviously, because that take, um, you know, uh, impacts the decision, the decision process. So as much information as you can fit in one to two paragraphs is very helpful in order to get a very specific answer. Um, you can also counter ask a question. So let's say they answered, the experts answered, and then you have another question, you know, that comes to mind. You're free to submit a second, you know, counter ask a question and you'll get an answer. Or if you need a clarification on an answer that was given, you're free to do so. So this interaction doesn't end until you feel you're satisfied in a sense, you know, but usually with one back and forth or two back and forth, everything is fine. Um, once you you finish with your question, then you need to check this box because you want to make sure that you acknowledge that this is information educational purpose only and that in no way this constitutes a patient physician relationship between the expert and the patient in the case. And once you've done that, then you click review and then you, you find the review page. So in the review page, you have everything here that um, you've entered. Let's say, you, I mean, you've entered the wrong age or something, you can uh, make last edits by hitting the update button in each section and you can go back and make the edits. Otherwise, um, you're ready to submit your question. And when you submit your question, you end up with this slide. This is the most important slide, I think, of the day, because unless you take that survey, um, your question will not go to the experts. Your question will linger somewhere in outer space. Um, and then people, you know, ask, you know, uh, um, reach out and say, hey, I submitted a question, where's my answer? So it's imperative that you take the survey so that your question is delivered to the expert. The reason for this, as you understand, is that if this is an educational platform and it's funded by a grant, you have, you know, it's through service, you know, and answers and feedback that the grant, you know, gets uh, renewed and this way, you know, CEN can continue to offer this free of charge. Now, something I didn't realize is that if you want to receive your CME certificate, though, you actually have to do both service, the post survey as well as the follow up survey four to six weeks later. Um, and then once you take the survey, then um, pretty much you're done. Your question goes to the expert and you can expect an answer. The nice thing is that even though technically it says that the experts are supposed to answer within 24 hours, we've gotten it down to uh, an average uh, response time in less than an hour. So it's really pretty effective and you get your answers uh, very quickly. So θα το πω και ελληνικά αυτό για να μπορούσα το ξεχάσω μετά, ότι είναι σημαντικό να καταλάβουν οι συναμήφοι ότι μόλις κάποιος υποβάλλει μια ερώτηση, συνήθως ο μέσος όρος απάντησης είναι μία ώρα. Υποτίθεται ότι οι ειδικοί θα πρέπει να απαντήσουν σε 24 ώρες, αλλά συνήθως αυτό το διάστημα είναι πολύ πολύ μικρότερο. To give you an idea about the clinical, uh, how the cases look, um, um, we're going to go through two cases. I'm not going to spend obviously any time on the meat and butter of the actual uh, medical information, but just to see what the questions look and what the answers look like when you get them back. So first case is a 40 year old with a stage three breast cancer. Um, uh, and the second one is a 75 year old with a 3.3 centimeter lung adenocarcinoma, where the question uh, is in regards to surgery during the uh, COVID uh, pandemic. And again, this is a list of the people answering these questions, which we already mentioned already, uh, Charles Balk and William Gradisher and Ms. Susan Klinberg and uh, um, Daniel Hayes and a lot of other great experts. So this is how uh, question one looks. Um, you can see this is the paradigm of how to write a question. You need a little short paragraph, not a whole narrative, but you need all the pertinent information. Usually I actually, I mean, this is a very young patient, but in older patients, I find it very useful to have the comorbidities here, performance status, obviously previous, you know, uh, treatments. 
and then you list your questions. Now, I like this case because it's not very usual that someone will ask you six different questions. Usually you get one question or two questions. Um, however, the reason I put it in here is because if you ask six questions, you will get, you know, four to six answers. So, for example, um, here you have, you know, very to the point, bullet point answers to four questions, but if you read, they cover all six questions. Um, and here you can see Daniel Hayes, um, uh, previous ASCO president, you know, answered every single one, you know, took his time to answer it. So people will not uh, cruise over this. They will spend the time needed to answer your question. They take it very seriously and they're very dedicated in answering. Um, second, the COVID case, again, um, I was very excited we have a COVID case to present because it shows you how fast CN got itself organized and, and, and uh, created a panel to answer COVID cases. What I found interesting about this case is, uh, you know, this is from a physician in Sao Paulo whose hospital was not actually facing any shortage of resources and he was asking about treatment, um, alternative treatments in the COVID era. And that kind of gives you the idea that the reason you need globalization of medicine, but you need experts to answer this is because what's unique about each place is the actual place, the actual hospital, what capabilities you have in that place and in that hospital and what resources you have. And the answer may change based on, you know, um, the answer to all of the above questions. So here, what I found interesting when I was reading the answers is that, you know, um, half of the people chose SBRT and half of the people chose um, surgery and they were both and they were all right um, in their own reasoning. And I think the what the idea here is that the art of medicine and the art of oncologic care is the fact that you can do things differently and still be right. And that's the beauty of this all. So it's very important to actually um, realize this. And I think that's one of the most beautiful parts about being a part of CEN. You, you get to know people from you know, other places of the world, you know, from Mexico, Colombia, Brazil, you know, um, all over Europe. Uh, it's almost like you have a little conference in your uh, living room. So we're going to proceed with the live demonstration. I think we had decided that we're going to leave all the questions for the end because we think most of the questions may be answered in the process. Um, um, but uh, for now, when I'm going to switch to Greek in a little bit as soon as I log in. So what we decided to do is I'm going to hack into Dr. Uh, uh, Saridaki's um, account and find about all her secrets, sorry about that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what pops up. Okay, I guess my hacking career is over because I, even though she gave me the password, I still can't log in. All right, hold on, I'll try it one more time. But don't hire me to be your hacker, apparently. All right, I think this is forgot an explanation, exclamation point. So, yep, all right, good. Second time is a charm. So, um, this is what, uh, as we said before, this is a live demonstration of what it means to log into the system once you've created an account. Switching to Greek. Λοιπόν, μόλι έχουμε μπει μέσα στο λογαριασμό μα με το email και το κωδικό πρόσβαση που έχουμε δημιουργήσει, ερχόμαστε σε αυτή τη σελίδα που στην ουσία είναι το dashboard. Έτσι. Εδώ πέρα, λοιπόν, αν είχαμε υποβάλει κάποιο ερώτημα, είχαμε δώσει μια απάντηση ή έπρεπε να κάνουμε κάποιο ερωτηματολόγιο ή οτιδήποτε, όλα αυτά θα φαινόντουσαν εδώ. Όταν λέει ότι είσαι κόρταπ, σημαίνει ότι δεν έχουμε κάτι άλλο. Εδώ υπάρχει αυτό το feed section, το οποίο, ε, αν κανεί κάνει scroll ε, down, ε, έχει να κάνει νομίζω περισσότερο με φάρμακα και φαρμακευτικέ εταιρείε. Είναι δημοσιεύματα από διάφορα, ε, διάφορα sites, τα οποία εγώ δεν από την αλήθεια δεν το έχω χρησιμοποιήσει, αλλά τέλος πάντων αυτό σας παρέχεται και νομίζω ότι έχει και διαφημιστικό σκοπό. Αλλά υπάρχει εκεί και μπορείτε να το δείτε με την ησυχία σας. Ας πούμε λοιπόν ότι θα βάλουμε μια ερώτηση. Λοιπόν, ε, εγώ... Ε, Ζήτησα από την κυρία Σαριτάκη, και η οποία ευγενώ έφτιαξε μια ερώτηση, την οποία θα βάλουμε εδώ. Έτσι, για να δούμε λίγο ζωντανά πώ θα το κάνουμε, πώ θα υποβάλουμε μια ερώτηση. 
Γνωρίζω λοιπόν ότι το περιστατικό που θα βάλουμε είναι για μία ασθενή με καρκίνο του μαστού. Ε, εδώ είναι πάντα το νέαρτη που έχει κάθε δραστηριότητα που σχετίζεται με συνεχή ιατρική εκπαίδευση, που στην ουσία λέει ποιοι είναι οι στόχοι της εκπαίδευση της εκπαιδευτικής δραστηριότητα, ποιο είναι το, το, το ακροατήριο κλπ. Ε, Λοιπόν, εδώ εμείς θα υποβάλουμε μια γενική ερώτηση. Θυμάστε ότι αν η ερώτηση σας έχει να κάνει με τον COVID πρέπει να πατήσετε αυτήν την κατηγορία προκειμένου να πάει σε, πιο, σε ένα πάνελ πιο εξειδικευμένο για θέματα COVID. Ε, στη συνέχεια, ε, αυτό δεν φαίνονταν στα slide and instructions που είχαμε, αλλά αν η ερώτησή σας δεν έχει να κάνει με συγκεκριμένο ασθενή, μπορείτε να πατήσετε εδώ και να προσπεράσετε ε, κάποια tabs παρακάτω. Αν όμως, ο ασθενής, ε, αν όμως αφορά έναν συγκεκριμένο ασθενή, τότε θέλουμε το φύλλο και στη συνέχεια θέλουμε την ηλικία. Εγώ θα βάλω λάθος ειδικία εδώ επίτηδες ε, για να σας δείξω μετά πώς μπορούμε να το διορθώσουμε αυτό. Και εδώ βάζουμε το κείμενό μας, το οποίο, ε, όπως είπα η κυρία Σαρδάκη, ενδιανώς παραχώρησε, οπότε δεν χρειάζεται να κάθουμε να ε, βαχτυλογραφώ. Και το παράδειγμα αυτό είναι... Ένα εξαιρετικό παράδειγμα πώς κάνεις να γράφει ερωτήσει. Δηλαδή, είναι ακριβώς αυτό που το CEN ζητάει. Θέλουμε το πολύ δύο παραγράφους, το οποίο έχουν ε, την ηλικία του ασθενούς, έχουν ε, όλα τα παθυλονοκομικά στοιχεία, αν υπήρχαν απεικονιστικά και είναι σχετικά τα βάζουμε, δείχνει τι θεραπείες έχει κάνει, ε, δείχνει επίσης το γενετικό έλεγχο και μετά υποβάλλει πολύ καθαρά Μία, δύο, τρει, τέσσερι ερωτήσει. Ε, Αυτό είναι ο πιο εύκολο τρόπο και ο πιο γρήγορο τρόπο για έναν ειδικό να σα απαντήσει, γιατί ε, θα απαντήσει ένα, δύο, τρία, τέσσερα. Έτσι. Λοιπόν, όταν η ερώτηση είναι έτοιμη, προχωρούμε παραπέρα. Θυμάστε ότι πρέπει να κάνουμε την αποδοχή των όρων όπου αναγνωρίζουμε ότι ε, ε, ο σκοπό αυτή τη εκπαιδευτική δραστηριότητα είναι καθαρά πληροφοριακό και εκπαιδευτικό και ότι σε καμία περίπτωση δεν συνίσταται ένα ε, σχέση γιατρού ασθενούς με τον ειδικό που απαντάει και τον ασθενή τον οποίο αφορά υπόθεση. Και εφόσον το ε, τσεκάρουμε αυτό, πατάμε review και αυτή είναι η, όπως είπαμε, η σελίδα που έχει όλες τις πληροφορίες τις οποίες έχει βάλει κανείς. Και εδώ, εγώ επίτηδες έβαλα 44-39 για να σας δείξω πολύ απλά ε, αν και αυτά είναι όλα αυτοεπεξηγούμενα, ότι αν πατήσετε update, ε, θα πάμε εδώ και μπορεί να βάλει κανείς το 39 και πολύ εύκολα να πλογηθεί μετά στη συνέχεια παρακάτω. Και ό,τι είχατε βάλει, αυτά τα κρατάει το σύστημα, οπότε δεν χρειάζεται να τα ξαναφτιάξετε ή τα χρειογραφήσετε. Στη συνέχεια, λοιπόν, εφόσον ε, στη σελίδα ε, της περίπτωσης όλα είναι όπως τα θέλουμε, έτσι, πατάμε submit. Λοιπόν, και τώρα βγαίνουμε σε αυτή τη σελίδα, την οποία και εγώ δεν έχω ξαναδεί, γιατί τη βλέπω μαζί σας, γιατί μέχρι τώρα όταν το έκανα λίγο πρόβα, δεν πατούσα submit για να μην φύγει μια ερώτηση στο πουθενά. Αλλά θα απαντήσω τώρα, είπαμε ότι πρέπει οπωσδήποτε να συμπληρώσουμε το ερωτηματολόγιο, γιατί χωρίς τη συμπλήρωση του ερωτηματολογίου η ερώτηση τώρα αυτή τη στιγμή απλά μένει εκρεμής, ας το πούμε, στο διαδικτυακό αέρα, χώρο και δεν πάει στους, στους ειδικού. Ε, Πατώντα λοιπόν το take the survey, και συμπληρώνοντα το ερωτηματολόγιο, το οποίο θα το διαβάσω και εγώ μαζί σας. Ε, λοιπόν, which of the following describes the nature of your educational need? Check all that applies. Uh, uh, so δεν έχουμε testing, δεν έχουμε staging, uh, clinical decision making, I guess αυτό μπορεί να είναι. Um, applic discuss applicable real world evidence, αυτό είναι λέμε OK. Uh, rate how effective the following information sources are for making clinical decisions. Um, I'm going to say highly effective. <laughs> Literature shows, okay, I'm just obviously biased. Medical journal textbook, um, and then attending live events. Okay, we're going to do that. Uh, professional association up our website. You know, obviously you can submit anything you want. And by hitting submit, now you're done. Your information is now going to be sent to the um, to the experts, and then you're all done. And it says you can return to the query anytime to complete the survey if you didn't do so, but we did so already. Now, if we hadn't done the survey, I'm assuming that it would pop up here as a, um, uh, a thing to do. 
Α, αυτά είχα να πω εγώ ως προς το live demonstration και νομίζω τώρα, Ζένια, να γυρίσουμε σε σένα. Δεν ξέρω αν κάποιοι έχουν υποβάλει ερωτήσεις. Εγώ ήθελα απλά να πω ότι αξιοσημείωτο είναι ότι ήδη Έλληνες ογκολόγοι ε, τη τελευταία, τελευταία βδομάδα έχουν καταθέσει ε, ερωτήσεις και έχουν απαντηθεί τα ερωτήματά τους. Με πολύ χαρά το είδαμε αυτό. Και πραγματικά ευελπιστούμε να συνεχίσει. So, Charles and, you know, Mark, um, I just mentioned that we already had um, questions from Greek oncologists within the last, you know, week or so, whose questions have been answered, and we were very excited to see that. So, Zenia, back to you. Um, so, thank you very much, Dimitra, for uh, this uh, brief but very detailed uh, uh, explanatory uh, process. I think we... I think we mostly understood and it's really easy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I have some questions, uh, uh, not through the chat, but I have some questions from the email. So um, we, I can do it both in English and Greek so that everybody will be on it. Yeah. So one question is, uh, could, could I select an expert to, to answer my case? Or is it a random method? Uh, my understanding, and we'll let Charles answer this also, but my understanding so far is that you cannot select your expert, but you're not randomly getting them. You're getting, you're getting them based on an algorithm that chooses um, who is the appropriate expert for this. But Charles, you, you, you let me know if this is correct or not. Well, that's exactly correct. We have a pool of doctors according to their specialty and uh, their disease site expertise. So once a HESMO member puts in a request, uh, it goes to the entire pool, and the first three that respond are the responses that go back to the client who's asked the question. In this way, we have a very efficient uh, system of response, which on the average, uh, the responses occur within two hours or less. Mm -hmm. So this, all of our experts are vetted to be sure that they are experts in that area or we wouldn't ask them to respond. But this allows a automated and very efficient system for getting a rapid response to those who are asking the question. Okay. Uh, another one is, can I have a follow-up question to the same... Uh, yeah, so uh, I think I mentioned... Yes. 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 I think I mentioned it already that you can, I, I just said counter ask instead of follow up, but it's the same thing. So you can counter ask or follow, do a follow up question. That happens actually uh, commonly. Um, so what I said was that the conversation really does not end until you are satisfied with, you know, and you feel you're okay with the answers. So a lot of times, you know, you, you, get, um, uh, you get a second question and I even had a third question from someone and then you get a thank you and you know we're done. Um, or sometimes someone may need a clarification on an answer. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really truly a conversation between uh, people, yeah. And uh, another question from Dr. Elena Leonardo. Can I upload a CT scan picture with no patient identification if I need a relevant opinion? Charles, that's for you. I never had a picture. Uh, at the present time, we don't have the technology to upload scans or radiologists to uh, review them. But we do like to have the extracted summary of the radiologic report uh, that is coming from the local experts. And certainly if there's a question about this, one of our responses would be to have a second opinion, uh, which oftentimes occurs when there's some questions in interpreting either x-rays or pathology. Okay. Another question regarding the COVID uh, pandemic. Um, is it going to be, uh, experts are going to be ad added as this pandemic uh, goes forward? Maybe also regarding specific medication, which probably is something that is uh, in development or um, in later stages, vaccines, if they are available, and it's going to be a real struggle to find out what's going to happen with our oncology patients. 
or uh, even regarded the testing. Should we do it before every cycle, before uh, the first visit, if symptoms occur? Um, I think that SEN has really been very close to it and very quickly formed a specific panel. Um, is this going to be... Um, um, are, are experts from, from uh, different fields also with the COVID, within the COVID you know, situation will be added so that we can have a, um, a follow-up um, answering to all our questions? Yes, we are all uh, learning together as this COVID pandemic plays out and gaining experience. I think as your members know that there are circumstances where uh, both can occur at the same time. Um, a good example of this is a patient with lung cancer with a high PDL1 uh, expression who might get a checkpoint inhibitor, but who is at risk for getting pneumonitis as a consequence or a complication of the checkpoint inhibitor. But in a patient who is at risk for COVID 19 or has recently had this, we might want to look at alternative treatments. But we do have in our system uh, those doctors who have checked the box of additional expertise in managing patients either with the COVID-19 infection and cancer or who are at risk for COVID-19 and we're trying to make decisions about their cancer therapy in that context. Mm -hmm. So it, we are all learning together, but we do have some of our experts who have have worked closely in the COVID-19 infection in their uh, cancer center or in their ICU. We also have those who have worked closely with the COVID-19 infection, both in Europe and in Asia and in the United States. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And uh, uh, another question, a more practical one. Um, no matter how many cases, uh, if someone asks, is with no cost? What do you mean? That's a yes. very good question. And uh, we have no limitations yes. in the number no of uh, requests that people can make. So uh, for right now, we have no restrictions. Yes, yes. You know, one practical thing I think I forgot to uh, mention um, in terms of the translation, which I think may be of practical value too, is this well, that... This was, this was yeah. the next question. Okay, um, good. <laughs> I just remembered. So. <laughs> we, have another one, uh, we have another one from Elena Leonardo as well. Uh, if, uh, do you plan to have surveys, statistics on who and what questions are being sent or from which countries? in uh, software are and what the needs are uh, and what it would be potentially useful as information educational wise and with uh, local na national societies. I think Elena, uh, this is an excellent question because this is something that uh, was um, uh, put in uh, the discussion when uh, HESMO and SEN started uh, discussing about a partnership, how important is education not only for younger, oncologist not only for young but for younger and i mean us you know the older ones um have you already done something like that charles with the other national societies that we you have been uh, um cooperating for some time now yes we do have that information and we would be glad to share that with the hesmo leadership and maybe create uh, a kind of service as well for, for, for the Hellenic uh, Oncology Society, correct? We'd be glad to do that, yes. So another, another question that I have, because you hacked my email, my account, uh, Dimitra, is what if um, I'm not really into translating it myself from English? Yeah. Uh, in the post that we have already distributed, they say that as a member can have a question um, written in their own language, like Greek. Yeah. Can we have an answer back 
in Greece. Yes, so I yes, and this is uh, thank you for posing this because I thought that was an oversight also. So the system when you actually submit a question in Greek, let's say in any other language, you know, since the system has a built-in you know algorithm for translating fifty languages, the your question will be um, will be uh, automatically translated so the experts get it in English now. I have to say that, you know, um, sometimes the translation may be a little bit off, uh, but um, everybody's working on this. And so far, you know, this was clearly used on some questions I received, and this was not a problem in understanding the text and the question and the context of the question. The, the only thing that I need to clarify, which is very important, is that so far the system does not automatically translate the, um, uh, uh, the, the answer that the experts give to you directly, unless you do one thing. So that's what I wanted to show you. So if you go here to the little person, this is my account. So if you're not versed in English very well, and it's my fault that I used you, Zenia, yeah, because you're actually very English proficient, because otherwise we would have done it and that wouldn't be a problem. But um, uh, I think the uh, here, if you go to account and you see here in their account information, your preferred language is English. Now, if you're not as English proficient, you want your answer in Greek, then you go to edit, change the preferred language to Elinika. I'm not going to click it here because I know you speak English, but then if you change it, then what the system will do will automatically um, translate the, the expert's answer into Greek for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's something that we needed to clarify. Mm -hmm. Let me add one thing. Remember that this is a AI translation and artificial intelligence. Yes. And for the most part, it does a good job with standard languages, but it does not necessarily have a faithful translation of some yeah. of the new words for innovative therapies or the medical terminology. So we have to take that into account. Usually yeah. you can follow those mistranslations and understand that, but I do want to just put in a word of caution. This is still not yeah. a perfect system yet, yeah. especially for the faithful translation of some of the medical language that we use. Sure, and that's why, because sometimes the difference is in the details. I would uh, really recommend that if someone is English proficient, they really use English instead of Greek. Um, but if you don't, you don't, and then we'll work with what we have. Yeah, and we'll get better at it as time goes on, yeah. So I think we're approaching uh, the end of this uh, webinar. Uh, Yanis uh, Bukovinas, could you, do you have another question that you think that uh, should be addressed? Uh, th one moment, there is one other question. Uh, from uh, Yota Economopoulos. From, uh, since this platform is an educational one, uh, can uh, a, a, med a medical doctor use the answer report uh, with no problem due to legal reasons? You mean, does the, well, remember you acknowledge that the, well, the legal reasons is actually a two-way system. So one is, if I understand the question correctly, I think um, she's asking, uh, let's say the doctor in Greece, for example, gets sued, can they rely on an answer that the experts gave, um, you know, for, I guess, legal defense? Um, and I guess that would be up to a judge to decide if a world-renowned expert counts as one. But I think it's very important to understand that you acknowledge that this is for informational and educational purposes only, and there is no physician-patient relationship. So the other you know, kind of leg of legality, you know, is that there is absolutely no patient physician relationship and there is no legal, let's say, ramifications for the experts answering because this is supposed to be educational. I mean, the person has not seen the patient, has not examined the patient, have not, has not seen the, you know, obviously the imaging and everything. So I don't know if that kind of answers the question. I'll be happy to clarify even further. But I guess if someone wants to use it and say that, yes, a renowned expert said, this is what they would do and this is what I did. I guess it's up to whoever judge decides if this is acceptable evidence, I don't know. What do you think, Charles? And Demetria, that was a perfect answer and I would just emphasize this is an educational program. Yeah. We're not directing care across nations, especially 
since we have no personal contact with the patient. This is educational. So our role as an educator in a legal defense would be no different than a textbook or other forms of education that a doctor would refer to as the standards of care or the application in a real world situation. Yeah, okay. So, Yanis, um, uh, do you want to close? Uh, I, would like, uh, I would like to ask him uh, what's about a multidisciplinary tumor board? How such a kind of tumor board is created through an answer? Uh, I mean that um, depending on your question or depending on the, what you are telling about, I would like to have an MNTT answer. I think this is for, for this Charles. Is for Charles right? yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was good. We're waiting for you, Charles. I'm sorry, I did not and hear the question. Would you repeat, please? Yes, I guess, Ma, uh, concerning the multidisciplinary tumor board, uh, how, how do we have access to such a board? It's a board of, uh, only for, from the experts uh, of SEN platform or experts from different institutions that uh, you have a partnership. So the uniqueness of Cancer Expert now is that our experts are from all over the world, including the major cancer centers or cancer centers in university medical centers. But we are not focused on any one uh, institution, but the expertise wherever that person uh, is located. And as many of you know, our experts move around, especially in America. But uh, our experts are vetted for their level of expertise in the specific areas that they want to respond as educators in certain specific areas. So we have now, I believe we're now over 300 experts who are part of our expert panels and um, that's a large pool of people for which we feel we can respond uh, quickly and efficiently with expertise of in a, a real world environment. Certainly as there are market demands educationally for certain areas that we can fill in with uh, additional experts as uh, the need arises that might be specific in one country or another. Just for one example, uh, last week, the Indian uh, Oncology Society wants to do more in head and neck because they have a larger incidence of head and neck cancer than in other parts of the world. And this is an area that we're going to grow. Uh, another area that we're getting increasing requests is in pediatric oncology. So we will, we will grow in our content expertise depending upon the partnership with uh, ecology groups such as HESPO and provide the educational services as the educational content need uh, is uh, indicated from your society. We're very pleased to have this partnership with you and uh, expect that it will grow in terms of quality and quantity over the weeks and months ahead. Another question is, do you have also access to radiotherapists? Yes, we have a, a number of radiation uh, oncologists, most of whom are professors or chairs of their department. Uh, a good example is Joel Tepper at the University of North Carolina, who's a past president of ASTRO, is on our expert panel, just as one example of the level of expertise uh, that we have on our panels for all of the specialties, including radiation therapy. Okay, so I think that um, we could say that the next uh, rendezvous or appointment is going to be during the month of June after ASCO this year with a webinar for the young oncologist uh, during the, uh, the Hellenic Academy of uh, Medical Oncology, Yanis, isn't that correct? Yes, yes. Yeah. 
So just for the membership, the ASCO abstracts came out publicly last night. Yeah. Yeah. And my email is filled with uh, uh, questions and comments about the mountain of new information that has come out in the ASCO abstracts just yesterday. So yeah. I'm sure we'll yeah. have a lot to talk about when we can meet you, in June. Can you give us a preview, Charles? Not yet. <laughs> it was only yesterday. <laughs> I, I okay. need to digest it first. So you we will have you for a uh, for a uh, you know um, a comprehensive uh, detailed um, presentation after mm -hmm. ASCO. Well, in fact, many of our many of our experts uh, actually are the ones that have submitted the abstracts or are leading some of these major clinical trials. So I'm sure there will be a lot to report uh, okay. after the formal ASCO presentations, which is coming up in two weeks, virtually, for the first time ever. Yes, exactly. So yes. Uh, exciting. Yeah. we will see you in a month and we will have plenty to discuss. Yanis, um, uh, would you like to close this uh, webinar, please? Charles, thank you very much. It was a very detailed um, approach to how, um, how to have access to send uh, a partnership. And um, uh, I would like to thank Dimitra for um, your kind offer to be with us um, uh, today. My and, pleasure. Uh, of it was my pleasure. Of course, uh, I hope that uh, during the next weeks, uh, you will be bombarded by our Greek colleagues uh, for cases. Uh, and, we hope so uh, too. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And this, uh, this webinar is also recorded and it's going to be on our site as well. So for everybody uh, that would, was not able uh, to see the whole of it, you, you, you will be able to follow it on demand. Very well. So thank you so much for having us. Okay. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.